A volunteer plays with kittens, one of many activities that helps a local organization called CATS get strays off the street and into good homes. CAT stands for Committed Alliance to Strays. We talked to board member Marsha Foster and office manager Sandra Fowler, asking what motivates them to work so hard for CATS. I, I love working here. I've, I've had different jobs. I loved my last job and it was great. Love the people I work with. But here, I really feel like I'm making a difference, not only for the cats that are here, but for the community, because we are working to get the cats off the street, which are a problem. We have a, a big problem here with stray, stray cats and abandoned cats. And so it's, it's gratifying to know that I'm making a difference. And not only that, but... I love cats. I've had cats in my family all my life. My motivation, first I should just say that I grew up always having cats around and I have one that slept with me every night. We moved here 12 years ago and before that my girlfriend, who now presently has moved away from here, was the executive director. So I'd come up to visit for a weekend and she'd be busy here. So I would come in and it just, you'd see things or she'd say, well, can you go do that, can you go do that, go fold the clothes, you know, et cetera. And I should say towels and things, shouldn't <laughs> I? But um, you just start falling in love with them and you get talking to one in one room and you get playing in another room with one and they, their personalities and everything. So over the years, then we moved here and I officially started coming down here all the time and doing all kinds of volunteer work. And I know I said before, but I'd end up at the phones, I'd end up wherever I was wanted and whatever I could do. I just was so impressed with this shelter, number one. I love the cats, so there's no denying that. But it became like a passion. And to ever walk away from it is just I can't imagine because they give you so much. They fill your heart up. They do. This little one took enough of our hearts to be allowed to play among our video equipment. Now if any of our viewers are motivated to get involved, Fowler says there are many ways to help. Any help that anybody can give us is great, whether that be money, time, food. Um, we have a wish list that's on our website, which is kittensandcats.org. Uh, we need still need things like bleach and laundry detergent because we go through those all the time. Foster parents. Um, foster parents, volunteers, sustainable donors. Uh, even if you just have an hour or one day to come in, and love on some kitties. That's they they love that. We don't always have the time we'd like to to give to the cats and to to love on them. I asked how someone would need to prepare if they decided to take one of these cats home with them. Uh, one, you're going to have to be prepared to give away part of your heart because <laughs> they are going to take it whether you want it or not. Um, but seriously, they. Uh, they need a litter box. They need food and water. Clean water is really, really important. Even if you have a cat that's outside, especially in the heat, they need um, a place to to uh, hot go to. You know, a place that's all their own. A bed. Um, Little uh, toys. 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 You're gonna have to be patient with them because it's we can't explain to them that they're going to a new home and this is gonna be their forever home. At first, they're gonna be scared. They're gonna, you know, probably hide or maybe act out a little bit. A little patience with them to get used to it and love and food, lots of food. Fowler says that food does not include cow's milk. Regular cow's milk is not good for cats. It will give them diarrhea. Yes. So unless you want to deal with that, you don't want to give that to them. If you have little kittens that still need like their mama's milk and their mom isn't there, 
There is kitten milk replacement. Uh, the brand we use is called KMR Kitten Milk Replacement that can be found at the pet stores. Uh, there's other brands too, but other than that, uh, do the best quality food that you can afford for a cat. And you know, some people can only afford, afford the bulk food that comes with things, and that's, that's fine. There's no problem with that. Uh, some cats do need to be on a grain-free. Um, we had one that uh, he had bowel issues. And we tried them on lots of different grain frees until we found one specifically that he can use. So it's um, tuna, people tuna is not good for cats either. So um, stick strictly to cat food or go online and look up, you know, how to make your own you know, meals for your cat. There are lots of videos yes. out there now if you want to cook plain chicken, plain different kinds of fish that don't have the bones in it kind of thing. You can do that if you want to, but there's lots of good brands of cat food out there. And wet food too. Yeah. Oh, I am a poser. Oh, yeah. room oh room. my god. Yeah. Really? Really? She's a nice girl. Oh, she's so sweet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, she Kittens are cute, and so are small children, but Fowler says that's seldom a good combination. Here we have a policy to not adopt cats six months of age or younger to into a house with a kid that is six years of age or younger. There are exceptions to that rule depending on how the kid interacts, and we watch that, but we reserve the right to say that's just not a good mix. Um, it's very important to teach your, your children how to deal with cats and any pets at all. You know, petting them gently, not picking them up by the head, you know, don't pull their tail. Um, when you do that, you're, you have a lot more variety of animals and ages to, to work with. Now what about the difference in general uh, between adopting uh, a kitten and a mature cat? <laughs> kitten, a youthful um, teenager, <laughs> very youthful teenager. Um, kittens, <laughs> kittens are a lot of fun, they're crazy, they run around, they play, you just, you, you know, you never know what they're going to do, they bounce, they trounce, <laughs> everything, but that personality is not necessarily what they're going to be when they're grown up. Um, an adult cat, you know what you're getting. You, their personality is there. You, they're a little more laid back, a little more calm. That's not to say that they won't play, as there's many even... Um, she was talking about Chester earlier. Oh. He's our, our old guy. He's the oldest one we have right now. He's 17. Makes him about 84 in people years. And he still plays. He's so and nice. he runs to get his soft food at night. But you know you know his personality. You know the personality of the older cats. It's sort of a big question mark with a kitten, but they're cute, they're fun, they're, you know. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna Lucy. Okay, buy me your way, Father. Ah, look at him. He's taking a picture of his shoulder. Cats come with claws. Yes. It's part of what makes them a cat. Well, I asked Sandra Fowler how people can meet the challenge of clipping those claws. You, you clip your, just as you'd clip your own nails, you clip a cat's nails. And um, that is something that we are always willing to show people how to do if you don't know how to do it, because there is what's called the quick in a nail. And it's sort of, if the nail is coming out like this, there's going to be a section right here that's going to be pink. And that's called the quick, and that's actually skin. So um, it does hurt them and it will bleed if you cut into it. We've all actually done that here by accident and feel horrible about it. But if you stay above that, just do the tip of the nail, you should be fine. And like I said, we we're willing to show anybody how to cut nails. And many times you've actually, when cats are from here, somebody's mm -hmm. made an appointment, mm -hmm. brought the cat back over because they were just a little scared about mm -hmm. clipping them yep. and have, they have taken care of it beautifully. Yeah, we have no problem doing that. So.
So you guys do follow up after somebody's. Yes, yes. yes. Um, not for every cat. Most people take care of it themselves, but you know, there's some uh, people who are just very nervous about it, or they're um, they're older and they just don't have the eyesight that they used to to get it done, and so they bring them in here and we we take care of that for them. Both Sandra Fowler and Marsha Foster advocate getting cats spayed or neutered. Getting your cats fixed or any cats in the neighborhood fixed. There are programs that can help you do that. It yes. cuts down on the strays that are around. A lot of the strays don't make it through the winter, don't make it through the summer. They can you know, get hit by cars, um, all kinds of not, not nice things that can happen, but uh, you can call us. We can give you numbers of who to call, or you can call SNP, which is S-N-Y-P, Spay and Neuter Your Pet. Coupons. They always have coupons. We have coupons if you have a stray at your house that you're feeding that you can touch. You can come here and buy a SNP coupon for $25. Um, and there's a list of vets on the back that accept those. That's a really great deal because it mm, costs yes. much more than that. But if you have your own cats and don't have the money to get them fixed, call SNP and they can usually help you. And if you just have to see some cute kittens, you can always volunteer at Cats in Medford or just watch more of this episode. Committed Alliance to Strays helps us learn more about cats and continues their mission to care for stray cats and get them ready for a good home.